Hey everyone, this is Tony Reeves. If you like my content or have any suggestions, please let me know. And by all means, make sure you share. The only way I can get my word out is you help me get the word out as well. Hey everyone, this is Tony Reeves, and this is another edition of Easy, But Not So Easy. Today we're going to talk about maintaining credibility in your legal case. I don't care what type of case you're involved in. When I used to practice law, I used to handle uh, different types of cases. I did some family law, some criminal, uh, mostly employment law. And I can tell you that during the time there, one of the biggest things I used to tell people is your biggest asset that you have is your credibility, or if any witness you use is your credibility. That's the easy part because with your credibility, it really boils down to your reputation as well as your ability to account information that's consistent with what the evidence says. So if the evidence says this and you actually are, say something that's consistent with it or that it can explain it, that's a great thing towards your credibility. The not so easy part is what happens when things happen that may put your credibility in jeopardy. One of the hardest things that people run across is not being able or not being prepared to answer the tough questions about tough situations or bad situations. When I used to sit there and I would go through um, the evidence, especially in employment law, I used to tell my clients all the time, what is the worst thing out there? I mean, and a lot of times people are like, I don't know what to Stop and think about it. In a case where they're gonna probably throw mud against you, what is the worst thing that happened during the time you were there? And the reason why you wanna do that is because you wanna be prepared to have an answer for what happened. And it doesn't have to be a, made, it's not a made up answer, it's you want to be able to put that in context. So if something on its face looks bad, but if you put it in context, you can kind of explain it away, then you can, you can kind of clean your, your reputation and your credibility up because now once you put it in context, it doesn't look quite so bad. But what happens sometimes is whether, even though it may be situations where you've completely forgotten about the scenario, or maybe you just didn't think it was that important, is that sometimes when people are questioned, and I used to have this happen in depositions every now and then, where there would be a situation I kept telling them over and over again, this is bad, we've gotta be able to address this. And sometimes it's tough, because sometimes you, don't, you, you, you almost have no good answer for it. But the key is not necessarily having a good answer, what you wanna be able is to be able to explain it in a contextual way. If you don't have a good way, or if you haven't addressed it or haven't considered it at all, the problem is that you leave it up to the other pe people to kind of come up with their own impression as to what the circumstances dictate. And you really don't want that to happen. The next part is not necessarily following the guidance of your attorney. I often tell people, because people get this word coaching in their mind. They'll say, oh, you know, I'm being coached. No, 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 no. It's not your attorney is coaching you. What they're doing is they're trying to help you present the evidence in a contextual manner that's consistent with what you experience and consistent with what the evidence says. So this way, your credibility is maintained. And that sounds really wild. But what happens is that the reason why it sounds wild is because when we look at a situation, we look at it A, B, C, D, E, and we think that should explain it and everything else should be fine. The problem is, is that most people are not in that person's world when those things go down. So you're expecting them to fill in the blanks for you in a manner that's going to be beneficial to you and not necessarily thinking that maybe that person doesn't understand that world. So if you don't fill in those blanks for them so that they can understand it, then what ends up happening is that you leave it up to the person to kind of figure it out on their own. Now what happens in a guidance situation is what happens is that the person has decided in their mind that they're in the best position to be able to explain away a situation. They, they got it. They, they don't need you, attorney. I got this. And then what ends up happening is one, the attorney has no clue what you're about to say. Two, they don't know if what you're going to say is good or bad because if it's bad, they got to hustle to clean it up. And three, if you have not told them this is what you were going to do, you leave yourself in a situation where that you created a situation that's not only bad, but you made it worse because now everybody's scrambling trying to fix what you just addressed. So when an attorney kind of lays out this is what they want you to do, they're not doing it to make you look fake. 
They're doing it because they're looking at the bigger picture of your credibility and how what you're going to be presenting is going to be advantageous or beneficial to you in the long term big picture. And then the lie. I have to, I, I'm sorry, I have to do that. Lying is what I call the credibility killer. And it's tough because a lot of times people say, oh, I don't know, you, you can call me no lie. Now, sometimes what happens is you'll say something that I, and I always tell people this when I used to uh, do, especially when I was doing a lot of litigation type of work. I would tell, you know, when I was doing a lot of my discovery and I would talk to people, I would ask them the question, if you say something completely different than what you said before, what do you call that? Well, I mean, I'm not saying nothing. I'm asking you, what do you call it? If something happened one way and you're now saying it happened a different way, but the evidence shows to the contrary, or maybe you said something on this date, but now you're saying something completely different, but that's not what you said on that day before. What's that call? And all of a sudden you're like, I'm like, nothing. <laughs> I'm not telling you that nobody's going to call you that, but you've got to keep in mind. Once you start contradicting yourself straight out, lying, I hate, I hate to call it this because some people, we use conflict, we use contradiction. Some people just outright lie. Once you do that, once you head down that path, there's not a whole lot that can be done for you. I, I'm really sorry. So just keep in mind that that is important. Yourself in a tough situation. Remember, your credibility is key. It guides everything going forward in terms of how people look at you and how they should look at the evidence as it relates to you.